So I'm out here at Bass Pro Anchorage, Alaska, getting ready for the Red Russian River season. It's almost fishing season, guys, so more videos will be coming up soon here. Uh, but I needed some new waders, so I decided to come here and get some new waders, uh, chest waders, and also get a new uh, fishing rod because my old one's messed up. I'll go ahead and show you guys that later on. But we're already in the future. I came here earlier about an hour ago. I bought a fishing rod. It's an ugly stick. It was $70 and then they didn't have the waders so I went to another spot, Sportsman Warehouse. I got my waders and then I stopped into Walmart and they had a better fishing rod for a cheaper price. So I bought that. So now I'm here to turn, return the one I originally bought from Bass Pro. So this is the one I bought from Bass Pro. This is the Elixit Elite. It's 8.6 or it's about 9 foot in length but this one is 8 to 14 pounds only $70 <coughs> this is the exact same thing exact same brand ugly stick I love ugly stick this is the exact same thing but this one is 8.6 as well but this is medium heavy and this is a 10 to 20 pounds so this one is a better rod at a better price um, like I said it's much more stronger and the, the rings are a little bit more smaller. So we're gonna go ahead and refund this and then I'll go ahead and show you guys my setup and how to get your rod ready for a Russian river. Okay everyone, so this is the fishing rod and fishing reel that I've been using for the last couple years, fishing red salmon at Russian river. And let me tell you guys, first and foremost, I am not a professional fisherman. I am not a professional angler. I don't do this on a full-time base. So I do apologize if I advance, if I give you guys the wrong info, or if I don't know the particular names of the components. But I'm going to explain what works for me and my setup that I've been doing for the last couple years. So this is the Ugly Stick. Ugly Stick is the brand, and they are known for some great rod. So this is what I've been using for the last couple years. Uh, just a little nice 7 footer, 6 to 15 pound line. I believe the line that I have right now is about 30 pound or 40 pound. And this is just a basically cheap Shimano reel. Works really great. I like it to be honest. The only reason why I bought a new one is because the rings. So this is the top one right there. You guys see that? <coughs> so there's supposed to be a little plastic guard inside of it like this. And it keeps the uh, it keeps the uh, fishing line from um, from tearing down. So it, I could have just repaired it, but you know what? I just decided to get a new reel. To be honest, this is not even my fishing rod. I got it from my parents' place, so I'm not even sure if it is. Uh, it might be my dad's, my brother's, but who knows? I just took it from them because they stopped fishing, and then I've been using it ever since. But again, I only use it like once or twice a year and that's only during Russian River. So <clears throat> we're gonna swap out the reel, put the reel into my new one. And this is the new one that I got. The Ugly Stick Elite by Shakespeare. <laughs> it's really nice, they changed their design. So this design is famous for Ugly Stick. When you see this black and yellow and red band, <clears throat> you know right away it's Ugly Stick. So I like the new style, the new style is very nice. It has a flat black, or it has a matte black. And this one is a, it's a bit longer, it's a 8.6, it's virtually about 9 foot, 8 foot and 6 inches. It's a medium heavy, 10 to 20 pound, and this is perfect for silvers and reds guys. I am fully confident in this, in these fishing rods, these two here can handle reds and silvers. If you're fishing for king salmon, then I might get I might suggest you guys get something a bit more stronger But I don't fish for king salmon. I only fish for reds and for reds to be honest This is a Russian river setup. So I'm gonna show you guys I'm gonna show you guys how I do my setup and we'll go from there So let me just go ahead and tear all these apart and swap over the reel and we're actually gonna change out all that line Because I don't know if this line is bad from all the abrasion So we're gonna go ahead and put a new fishing line and I'll show you guys the full setup from the reel to the line and how I tie my hooks and my sinkers and all that stuff. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take off this reel, um, unwind the old fishing line, and we're gonna slap this onto my new one. So 
really simple to do. I'm sure most of you guys know how to do this. I'm still gonna keep this fishing rod because it is still very good. Um, if you really need it to use it, you can still use it. It's just that the your fishing line is gonna get more abrasion, but it's still a really good one. And I might just bring this with me when I go fishing as a backup rod in case this one snaps or you know something happens. So this is the fishing reel here. Uh, if you guys really want to know what model it is, it's like a 4000 FB. So I believe this is like 40 pound. I think this reel here holds about maybe 50 yards of 40 pound lines. Um, and then if you go lower on your pound of line, you can break, you can carry more. But for Russian River guys, you need no more than 50 yards. So for Russian River, 50 yards is plenty. Um, unless you don't know how to fight, or unless you don't know how to handle your fish. <laughs> if you're if you're fishing for king salmon, that on the other hand, you need more than 50 yards because, like I say, you're gonna be fighting those big boys. So that's it right there. I like this new rod. It's uh, it's much longer. It's light. I like it. I like it. Let's talk about what you need for your fishing rod. This is what you need for your fishing rod. And again, this video is all about Russian River only red salmon. I'm not talking about trout. I'm not talking about sharks. I'm not talking about halibut. We're talking about salmon fishing at Russian River or fishing for reds in general. This is what you need, guys. I am not super picky about which brand. I go with this is the cheapest brand they had at Walmart and to be honest 25 pound is doable for reds but I hate snapping lines so I usually run 40 pound this is 40 pound I think last year I ran 30 but 30 to 40 pound is plenty 50 60 overkill way overkill so stick with 40 to 30 pound for my recommendation that's what you need <laughs> make sure you fill up your uh, your reel and make sure you bring backup. It's always good to bring a spool or whatever you have left. Bring them as backup, and I'll tell you that. We'll talk about that about that later on. Next thing you need your hooks. These right here are called Russian River flies or Russian River hooks. You can get them at Walmart. They're like two to two fifty, two dollars and fifty cents a pack. Comes in three packs. They have different colors, guys. In my experience, I haven't seen. A difference in which color is better or worse I know that they all work so don't be too picky grab some red ones grab some yellow ones grab a little bit of everything they come in red green yellow just grab a little everything and this is your first time at fit Russian River you're gonna go through a lot of hooks <laughs> and the reason is if you get if your hook get caught up in some woods or some rocks you're gonna be breaking a lot of hooks so I recommend you bring a lot of hooks last year alone I broke like at least over 20 hooks just because I was getting my hook too deep or getting it caught on some wood that's under the river. So make sure you have at least 20 hooks if this is your first time. If you're going with a lot of buddies, make sure they all have enough hooks for themselves. The next thing you need is some weight sinkers. Weight sinker made of lead. This is what I use. This is what my brother would use. This is what my friends use. It works. It's the best. These are what we use. You can get all this stuff from Walmart, guys. Split shots. They're called split shots. So it's it's very easy. You uh you open them up like that, and then when you put your line inside, you clamp them up. Make sure you have a lot of these guys as well. This comes in a pack of ten. Make sure you have at least maybe fifty if this is your first time. I got about five six packs, and I might go get some more. So hooks and sinkers make sure you got plenty because if you're out there in Russian rivers there's a few place in town that there's a few place nearby that might have lures and sinkers but it's gonna be expensive so make sure just get enough guys just get enough if you're worried about the cost just buy more than what you need keep them in a nice clean bag ziplock when you're done with your trip you can just go back and refund them whatever you don't use alright the last thing you also need are these guys here <coughs> you see that barrel swivels this is a size 5 
you don't need to go any bigger than that. They have these in different size from big ones to small ones, medium size, smaller than this. This is like the perfect size. And I'll tell you what this is all for once we get going, guys. So that's the main three things you need. And make sure you have extra of those in your vest or in your toolbox, whatever you want to do it. Okay guys, I have my new rod on. I have my new line on. This is the new line right here. You might not be able to see it. I got my fishing vest on. This has all my gear. First thing, let's go ahead and take care of some gears. Here's what I want you guys to do. Take all your, your sinkers, your weights here. <laughs> open them up and this is where I like to put mine. I just pour right in there. Do not throw these away. Save these because I will tell you what to do with it. When you're fishing, you don't have time to open these up and clamp on the sinker. Pour them into your zipper bag here, your pocket, and whenever you need it, you just put your hands in, boom. You don't have to guess. All you know is that there's this pocket is a dedicated pocket for all your weights. That's how I roll. So make sure you save these baggies. For all your hooks, you see this? This is paper. This is plastic. When you're on the river, you don't want to be carrying this and you don't want to be trashing the river. So make sure you throw these away. So you want to take a Ziploc bag and put all your hooks in there. But don't do it yet. I'll tell you to do it when it's time. So have a Ziploc bag just in case. These guys right here, you can do the same thing. I have a dedicated pocket just for these guys. This is the sinkers. All my sinkers is in here. And then this little bag in front of it, it's all these little swivels. This you can throw away. One thing to get used to is using your mouth to hold things. So yes, get used to doing this. Just don't hook yourself. Okay, so if you have a fresh setup, we're gonna do how to tie your fishing hook. <coughs> You're gonna take your line. All right guys, so this might be a better view for you guys. I'm gonna stand behind the camera and show you guys how to tie a hook. So you have that right there. So the hook's like that. So what you wanna do is take this end right here and you wanna loop it behind like that. You guys see that? It went behind. <coughs> Not in front, it went behind. And you're gonna do that a couple times. So either one, you can do as many times as you want. Usually I do about five or six round. And we're just gonna keep going, keep going. And then you're gonna have something like that. You see that? And then you're gonna take the end of your line and put it to the eye. You guys see the eye right here? You're gonna do that. And once it's in the eye, you see that? You're gonna grab the end of it and pull it. Be very careful. <coughs> Usually I would use my mouth and or teeth and pull it with this one. Let me do that real quick. So once you pull this up, all those little twists that you did becomes your knot. And what you can do is you can make sure it's nice and tight. This is what you have at the end, guys. You guys see that? And I recommend everybody have a cheap plier. This is a cheap plier from Lowe's. Costs like two bucks or so. You can use your mouth. Or if you're not confident, you can take your plier and just kind of pull it. Just give it some tension. Just not too much, just some tension. And then you have that. And then you have this extra loose piece right here. You have this extra loose piece, we're gonna nip that off. Just enough, not too much, just enough. Like that's perfect right there. We have our hook tied on. Next thing we're gonna do is guesstimate about four feet of line. So you wanna take your hook. It doesn't have to be exact guys, about four to four, three, four feet. I usually just use both my arms, stretches as much as I can, and then I just take a guess. And here's what we're gonna do, guys. You're gonna take the line. You're gonna take the line. And you're gonna cut it. What? Why would you do that, new? Don't worry, I'm showing you guys the secret technique. All right, so you, we just cut the main line, guys. So now we have, there's a hook and nothing at the end. Now here's what we do guys, hold on to the hook, 
take the end of the hook, take one of these go swivel, loop it in, and tie it the same way I showed you guys for the hook. Same method, guys. Same method. Do that. Go around. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six. The more the better. You know, it doesn't hurt. And then this is what we do. Put it back in the loop. And this is where I talk about using my teeth. So once you get that, you should get a knot. You guys see that little knot? You can take your pliers and just kind of go snug in. Same method, guys. Same method as the hook. So really, if you don't know how to tie a hook, you just need to learn this method. And this technique right here will work for all your other ones. So now we have a swivel. Roughly at four feet of line. And then at the end of it, you have the hook. This is now called a leader. This is the leader, and your main line is on your pull. So now we attach the main line to the other swivel head. If this doesn't make sense, just rewind the video. It's not too hard. <coughs> this is the other hole right here. You guys see that? Same method. Take your pliers. Just cut it off. You have these. So now we have the main line from your fishing reel, a swivel, and this is called the leader, guys. So this is the method most people use at Russian River. You have a leader, and the leader has the hook, and the leader is nearly four feet, five feet, some people make it longer, and let's finish it first. So now we have that. Next thing we're gonna do is grab our sinkers are split shot. These are the split shot sinker. So for Russian River, for Russian River, you need about maybe three or four split shots, all right? At least three at minimum, depending on which section you're at. If the water, if the current is strong, if the current is slow, you can take these off according to what the current is. You know, if you have a fast current, you want more weight, so this will drop down faster. If it's a slow current, then you want less weight. So we're just gonna snap it into like that. You guys see that? I didn't show you guys, but see how it's open? You guys see that? It's open and we're just gonna put it right on the line. And these split shots are going above the swivel, not below the swivel, above the swivel. So from the swivel to your main line. Very good to have these pliers, guys. I'm just gonna put three for now, cause usually when I'm in Russian River, I use three, especially where I, especially at the spot where I fish. All right, guys, we just completed the full setup on the rod. We have the main line, three split shots, the swivel, and our leader. You guys see that? This is the leader. That's all we need for Russian River. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys, I don't know the co complete concept of this method, but my buddy once told me, shout out to Andrew Prop. So this is basically what happens when you throw it into the river. Imagine this is the river. When you throw it into the river, this is the sinker. They're gonna sink down, and it's gonna sink down, but then since there's no weight over here, this hook is gonna be floating up and down, up and down, and supposedly, if a fish comes, they like it, they'll bite it. Or if you're trying to like snag them onto their mouth, like a little quick snag, that's usually how it works. So that's the method. You don't want to put the sinker or any weights at the hook because if you do that, the hook will just drop, drop straight down to the bottom of the bed of the river and you're not going to catch nothing. So this is the preferred method. If this is your guys' first time at Russian River, I recommend you guys try this method. Throw in there, it's going to float and then when you pull it out, it's going to Hopefully they bite it or they jerk it. Now we are not done yet guys, we are not done. Now that your rod is finally set up, go ahead and set that aside. So this is what I have right here. My completed rod. I have my hook, about four feet of leader. I don't have enough room space, a head space. About four to, four, four to five feet of leader. 
the swivel, and the rod. Okay guys, so we are done setting up the rod. That's completely it. The next thing is that this is Russian River guys. Have you guys ever heard the word combat fishing? Alaska is known for combat fishing. When you go fishing at Russian River, you're basically competing with other fishermen. But how do you beat them? You beat them by technique guys. How do you beat them by technique? Here's what I can tell you guys. Let's say you're fishing and let's say your hook snaps. Well guess what? You're gonna use about maybe five minutes to tie your hook back together, right? And here's where it snap guys. When your fishing line snap, your leader is the one to first snap. That's the main thing. So your leader is gonna snap and <clears throat> at the end of your line, you're gonna have your swivel. Most of the time, your swivel won't snap. Most of the time, it's gonna be the leader. So most of the time, if it snap, you'll still have your swivel and your and your sinkers, your your uh, your your weights. Now, if that happens, you need to attach a new leader and a new hook, and that takes some time if you're not prepared. But since we are smart fishermen, so we're gonna prepare ahead of time. You guys remember those bags I told you guys to save? This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this time to make extra liters. How do you do that? Well, it's super simple. All you do is just take all, you just take maybe your line. <coughs> you have you have a spool of line, guys. You bring your spool of line, right? Take your line, you tie your hooks. Same method, guys. Tie all your hooks. Now imagine doing this while you're on the river, guys. You're wasting precious time. You're wasting super precious time. And holy smoke, a freaking school just swam down. And guess what? The other guys are catching it. And I'm not making this up. This happens all the time. If you guys fish at Russian River, you guys are like, yeah, news freaking, right? So since we are combat fishing, <clears throat> we want to use techniques, guys. We don't want to... And it's not about beating your fishermen. It's about beating the fish. You want to outsmart your fish, you know? They're going to do their best to break your line. Or if you get your line caught up, they're going to do their best to break it. <clears throat> okay, so we have a new hook hooked up. A new hook lined up. And now we're going to take... We're going to guesstimate. It doesn't have to be exact, guys. I'm just going to... You know, I like to take my whole arm. And we're just going to cut it off. We now have a spare leader. And we're gonna carefully take the leader and wrap it around like this. And I'm pretty sure you guys all do this because if you guys don't do this and you guys are just finding out right now, I don't know where your guys' head have been. We're gonna take that nice plastic baggie and we're gonna put it inside of it. This is your reload, guys. Look at that. No mess. You're not gonna get it caught up anywhere. <laughs> you can put this in your pocket. I usually put it on this pocket here. And check this out, guys. All of these bags are here. They are. They used to be all my spare liters from last year. So look at it. I went through almost 10 liters, and most of them were from. I would say 90% of them was from getting my hook stuck on some kind of crazy rock or log. And the rest of it was, you know, from the fish actually snapping the line. So I went through all of these. So what you want to do is just take your, take your spear leader, put in your bag, and let's say we're fishing. Boom! Oh, we snap a leader. But guess what? Our swivel is still on. We just take out one of these bags, take it out, tie it to the leader, and boom, we're back in action, guys. You don't have to worry about taking out your spool cutting it, tying the hook, and then tying onto the leader. All you gotta do is take out one of these guys, take it out, tie it to the swivel, put your bag away, and boom, you're done, guys. It's super fast. It takes no more than like a minute, two minutes top once you know what you're doing. So, if you guys have free time, use all that time to make your leaders. I usually have about 10 to 15 spare leaders ready to rock and roll. And once you're done, once you think you have enough leader and if you have extra hooks, that's where you want to go ahead and take out all your hooks from these little baggies. And I will store them. I store them into a Ziploc bag. So when I'm actually out of leaders, I'll go ahead and go into this main batch and I'll start getting my actual raw hooks. And then you got to start from the beginning, tie it to a leader, cut the leader, and then tie it to your swivel. <clears throat> if you're swiveled, 
if you break your line and your swivel does break, then it's not that bad. All you got to do is take your main line, take a new swivel, tie the main line to the swivel, and boom, take a new hook, put a new leader on, take out your, your, your split shots, hook up your split shots, and boom, you're ready to rock and roll, guys. So once you get that method down, it's super, super easy, and I recommend this is the basic setup for anybody that's looking to do some Russian River fishing. And really, that's all I have for you guys. I mean, you can bring extra stuff if you want. Um, Ziploc bags, a pair of pliers is mostly needed. <clears throat> is a must because this little piece here is good for cutting the line. And also when you get a hook, when you get a fish, this is good for taking the hook out of the fish. Or if you snag the fish, this is good for to, to, uh, to unhook the fish. And also I do recommend, <clears throat> if you guys use the fishing method I, that I use, the method where I take the rod and take the line like this and I swing it back and forth. I recommend you guys have a glove because if you if you're using your bare hand, that fishing line can actually start getting some. Uh, you can start getting rash just from that time period over and over. So it's good to have this line. It's good to have this line here. And what you'll and what you'll do is you'll just take your rod, and then you'll take your line like this. And this is a nice. This is actually a, a cutting with glove for a fish, so it's nice and smooth. So when you swing it back and forth, your the palm of your hand won't get all ashy, or it won't get uh, you won't get you'll start to get rash if you don't have the glove. So make sure you have the glove um, at least for one side. And also this glove is also good for getting a grip of the fish once you need to land it or something like that. So really, guys, hopefully this video wasn't too long. I know it's a very very detailed, but it's a very fast video, and hopefully you guys can find some information. This is how to get your fish room right ready for Russian River super simple guys you don't need to buy an expensive rod you don't need to buy an expensive reel it's nice to have good brands but really if you just want to get out there and catch some fish you just need a really basic setup and really you can get a fishing rod set up for under a hundred bucks and then on top of that you Russian River it doesn't even require waders you can just get um, hip boots and go from there depending on how deep you want to go and then this chest is optional if you want to get a vest like this or you can just carry a backpack but really guys that's all you need to get ready for Russian River and I'm pretty pretty excited to try out my new rod and we will be doing some fishing in two weeks once Russian River opens so hopefully you guys stay tuned subscribe and hopefully you guys will be able to see some videos and some new fishing adventure videos coming up if you guys got any questions leave them in the comment section down below if you guys are experienced anglers and you guys think that I said something wrong or if you guys have some tips for me and for other people leave them in the comment section down below so we can all grow as a community and man I love this new fishing rod so I'm gonna wrap it up for now guys hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time bye bye